Hi everyone, welcome to my new video about Apache Spark 3.11 features. This time I wanted to show you the GDBC integration with the data source v2, but in fact it's still the work in progress. Nonetheless, I think that it's worth to checking how, how this data source v2 API looks like, and that's the reason why I decided to illustrate it with a one of already su supported uh, data sources. Mini, namely the JSON data source v2. So here you can see my sample demo code where I will, as you can see, write a 10 or 11, I'm still not sure about this including, yeah, currently 11 users to, to some JSON files. And later I will read it uh, with a very simple show command. So to demonstrate how this uh, data source v2 for uh, JSON uh, works, I added some breakpoints and, which is quite important, I also disabled this user vi source list property because if you check the meaning of this property in the configuration, you will see that starting from Spark 3.0, we have some data sources having the v2 api ready that are not currently used by default by apache spark so that's the reason you can almost if you compare what is available for v2 you will see that it's almost this all uh, that's all data sources that are present here are still considered a bit like a data source like the data sources in progress so that's the reason why i emptied this list before running the test. So here we can see the, the GDBC scan that I'm describing in the article linked in the description of this video. And you can find almost similar classes for JSON. The difference is that in GDBC, you will not find the GDBC data source v2. And because of that, you will not be able to use it currently with the data source v2 API on your programs, even by emptying this use v1 source list. So that's the reason why I'm using here the JSON format. So I will now start this demo. And as you can see, I added two breakpoints in the main program flow just to separate this writing and reading parts. So I will run the code right now. And you will see that the, for the first write, that by the way, the write and read paths will be the same. So for the writing, we are going to the lookup data source v2 method with uh, the name of the data source. And you can also notice that we have here our vi source list that I emptied just to always use all the available v2 data sources. So normally here I would fall into the second case and uh, yes. So now that it will perform some writing and now we will go to the reading part. And you can see that I will use the same resolution method and that I will go to, to this uh, parent call for the, uh, based on the lookup data source v2 returned object. And now I will, be, I will use the API described in the article. So namely here I will do some JSON scan, meaning that I will scan uh, some location for the JSON files with the help of this JSON scan object, which is present in the data source v2 package. So uh, yes, and to physically read the data, I will use a partition reader factory, or rather than that, I will call partition reader factory in order to generate a partition reader that as you can see for JSON is only supported in the raw format. But if you check the, the API, so let me show you that. If, yes, if you check the API of the parent class, namely file partition reader factory, if one file format can be read, can be read in both columnar and row uh, format, you will have to implement these two methods, namely the create reader for the row based uh, reading and create columnar reader for this columnar uh, 
reader. Obviously, if you check the for the examples for the columnar reader, the columnar reader you will find it in in parquet. So yes, it's this class, I think so. Yeah, uh, yes, no. So for parquet, you can see that we support the row reader, and we also have the columnar reader. But anyway, let me go back to this JSON reader factory and yes, we are creating the factory for the tasks. And normally we read, we just read all the created records. And yeah, globally that's all. I didn't focus a lot about on the interfaces involved in the writing and reading parts. But if you are quite, but if you want, if you are curious, you want to discover them, I invite you to the article which is linked in the description in this video, where I put a much more technical and deep delve details. It was Bartosz Konieczny from WaitingForCode.com. Thanks for watching.